The age-old question of whether it's cheaper to buy versus rent a home is surprisingly controversial. On the one hand, we have people that say that renting is basically just throwing away your money and you should buy a home so you can start building equity. And in their eyes, that's way better than paying rent and making your landlord rich. And then on the other hand, we have the people that usually consider themselves a bit more financially savvy that say that owning a house is a liability. They say that instead of buying a house, you should continue renting and then use the money you would have spent on a home purchase to invest and continue to build wealth. I mean, that's what Grant Cardone says to do, right? I watched quite a few videos on YouTube about buying versus renting, and I must say I wasn't quite satisfied with any of them. Most of them made some kind of big mistake that resulted in really inaccurate comparisons. For example, in this video, which has 5 million views, they made a comparison between buying a $500,000 house, which costs $3,220 a month to own, and assumed it would also rent out for $2,100 a month. Which is completely insane because a landlord would never rent out a $500,000 house for so cheap. $2,100 would be well below the market rent for a $500,000 house. So in this in-depth buy versus rent analysis, I really did my best to make sure I was as accurate as possible so we can get to the bottom of this age-old debate. And if you think that I made any mistakes in this video, feel free to comment down below what that was. And then once you're done commenting, scroll back up and go ahead and like the video as well, because it would really help me out and these videos just really take me a long time to make. The first step to comparing buying versus renting a home is to actually be comparing out apples to apples. And by this, I mean that we really can't be comparing owning a $1 million mansion to renting out a studio apartment. So to do this, I found a house for sale on Zillow. It's located in Grand Prairie, Texas, and is priced at nearly $300,000. I then searched for a comparable home for rent in the same area. I found this almost identical house that is listed for rent at around $2,200. Both houses are 1,800 square feet, have three bedrooms, two bathrooms, and a double garage. So I think it's fair to say that the market rent for this $300,000 home is about $2,200 a month. I know these houses haven't technically sold or rented at the listed prices yet, but it will likely be close enough to the list price. So let's break down the costs of renting versus buying these homes. First, I wanna make clear a few assumptions that I'm going to be using. Since homeowners stay in their homes for an average of 13 years, I'm going to calculate whether it's cheaper to buy versus rent over a 13 year time period. I'm also going to be assuming an annual inflation rate of 2%, which is how much more expensive things will get year over year over the 13 years. Okay, so let's take a look at the the costs of renting this $300,000 house. And side note, there's no way I can remember all these numbers off the top of my head, so I'm going to be reading a few of them off of my laptop here. So we worked out earlier that the market rent for this home is around $2,200 a month. Another cost you'll have when renting is renter's insurance, which I found a quote for $20 a month. You'll also have one more cost when you're renting, and that's all the many fees that landlords will tack onto it for stuff like smart home features, parking, and utility management. I'm going to assume $80 a month for these fees, which brings our total monthly payment to $2,300 a month. But this is only our payment for the first year. Throughout the 13 years that we live there, our rent and other expenses will continue to rise because of inflation. So I'm going to assume that our rent and other expenses will increase with inflation, which is 2% annually. This means that even though we start out renting at $2,300 a month, as rent rises over time, we're going to end up paying over $2,900 in year 13. I'm going to take the average cost of rent over the 13 years, which is $2,600 a month. So this is our total average inflation adjusted rent. Now we have to calculate the money we can make by investing the money that we saved by choosing to rent instead of buying the $300,000 home. The average down payment for a home in the US is 12% of the purchase price, so I'm going to assume that we are the average. So 12% of a $300,000 home is $36,000. If we had bought the home, then we would have also had to pay around 2% of the home's price and closing costs. So we've also saved an additional $6,000. When renting, we do however usually have to pay one month's rent to the landlord as a deposit. So if we total these numbers up, then the amount we saved by choosing to rent versus buy a home is $41,800. We can invest this money to make additional income. So let's say we invest it into an S&P 500 stock market index fund, which has historically returned 8% annually. Then after 13 years, we would have turned our initial investment of $41,800 into 
$113,680, which is equivalent to around $461 a month in investment income. We can subtract this number from our total monthly cost, which gives us $2,139, which is our true average monthly cost of renting this home over 13 years. So now let's take a look at the numbers if we were to buy this $300,000 home instead of renting it. In this case, we're buying the house with a $36,000 down payment and paying $6,000 on closing costs, which totals $42,000. The rest of the money to purchase this house will come from a mortgage loan. And right now, the average 30-year fixed rate mortgage is around 2.88%. So that means that the monthly mortgage payment will be $1,096 a month. Unlike renting, this number is fixed, so we don't have to worry about adjusting for inflation, which is one of the benefits of buying a home versus renting. But there are so many more costs to owning a home, and these costs will increase with inflation. You have to pay things like property taxes, and for this home, I worked out that the average taxes paid over 13 years will be $610 a month. You also have to pay homeowner's insurance, which will average $110 a month. And one expense that many people forget to factor in when buying a home is the cost of repairs and maintenance on the home. For example, let's say that every 15 years you have to replace your roof and that this will cost you $15,000 then you have to set aside $1,000 each year to budget for this repair. So for repairs, I'm going to assume that it's going to cost on average $200 a month. We also have to pay mortgage insurance, which is $130 a month. This is an extra payment that you have to make in order to secure the mortgage lender when you have a down payment that's less than 20%. And since ours is 12%, we have to pay it. This brings our total monthly out-of-pocket housing expense to $2,145. But here's where it gets interesting. When you make monthly payments towards paying off your mortgage, a portion of that goes towards paying off the interest of the mortgage and the rest of that goes towards paying the mortgage principal. During the 13 years we own the house, we will be paying off around $560 a month in principal, which is equity we're building in the home, so it's not really a cost. It's more like a forced savings account that's trapped in your home until you sell it or refinance it. Another form of savings that we receive by owning a home versus renting is tax savings. As a homeowner, we're allowed to deduct our taxable income by the amount we spend on mortgage interest payments and property taxes. So in this case, we'll spend $1,000 $146 a month on interest payments and taxes, so we'll be able to reduce our taxable income by this amount. And if we assume that our marginal tax rate is 22%, that means we're going to be able to reduce the amount of taxes we pay by $252 a month. Another form of income that we'll gain by owning a house is appreciation. Over a long time horizon, housing has historically always increased in value. I know that the real estate market has increased around 18% this year, but this isn't sustainable. Data has shown that real estate has historically kept pace with inflation, so we'll assume that our house will go up in price around 2% a year. So in 13 years, our house will actually be worth $388,000. So on a monthly basis, we'll be gaining around $565 in appreciation, which is a gain we can subtract from our housing expense. But we're not done yet. We also have to factor in how much it costs us to close on the home, which we said was $6,000, as well as the cost of selling the home after 13 years. I'll assume that this will cost 7% of the sales price, since the typical realtor's fee is 6%, and you also have to pay for a few other different things when selling a home. Even though we pay these expenses when we actually go to buy or sell the home, I'm going to stick to calculating calculating everything on an average monthly basis, so this will cost us $213 a month. This brings our net monthly cost of owning a house to $981 a month. But there is one final step that I feel is only fair to include. Since in the rent example, we calculated how much we could make through investing our housing down payment, it's only fair in this buying example to also include the extra money we can invest monthly since our housing payment is lower than our rent payment. Since our out-of-pocket rental cost is $2,600 a month and our out-of-pocket housing cost is $2,145 a month, our out-of-pocket housing cost is $455 less than renting, which is money we can invest into the stock market at an 8% annual return. This will actually make us a massive $117,364 over 13 years, which is equivalent to $752 a month in extra income. So I know this sounds ridiculous, but if we take this into account, then the true cost to own this $300,000 home is actually $229 a month. 
And I know it's crazy to go from an out-of-pocket housing cost of $2,145 and somehow end up at a true cost of $229, but that really is the power of tax advantages, house appreciation, equity buildup, and investing the difference. So in this scenario, buying a house is actually $1,910 cheaper than renting that same house for 13 years. With that being said though, there are just so many factors that can change the results of a buy versus rent analysis. To name just a few, your tax rate, how long you stay in the home, whether you invest or not, how much the housing market appreciates, and the rate of return on your investments are all things that can change the result of what's cheaper. Just because in this scenario it's cheaper to buy a house doesn't necessarily mean that it doesn't make sense for you to rent. If you don't want to worry about housing repairs, buying and selling a home, and want to have the flexibility to be able to move whenever, then renting is probably a better option for you than buying. Another thing that's important to know is that as our analysis showed us, buying and selling a home is expensive. So if you only plan to live in the home for a short time, then you won't have as much time to recoup these costs, so it would make more sense to rent. Overall, it will usually make more financial sense to buy if you're planning on living in the same place for three to five years or more. So that's the analysis I did on buying versus renting, and I hope it was helpful for you, and I hope it helped you decide whether to buy or rent. Like I said, if you think that I missed anything, feel free to drop that in the comments down below, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.